Hello, my name is Peter, and appropriately for this time of year, I've written a story called The Twelve Days of Christmas. Alex had to break the news to his fiancée, Julia, that he will be away for a couple of weeks on an urgent contract. Not normally a problem, but this was the period leading up to Christmas. Alex assured Julia that he would be back for Christmas Eve, but he would send her something special every day he was away. Monday, day one. A courier van arrived at Julia's house with a cumbersome box. The driver struggles with the box and, slightly out of breath, he rings the doorbell. Good morning, I have delivery for you. He produced a pad for a signature. Thank you, have a good day, he says, and walks off. Julia is puzzled by the large item, then inches it through the door into the hallway. Peeling away tape from the edge of the box, Julia discovers a four-foot-high tree. Pulling the tree from its container, she is shocked to find a dead bird in the foliage. There was a card with loving words from Alex. She phones him. What on earth is this you sent me, darling? A big bush and some sort of fowl, I think. Uh, and by the way, it's dead. Whoops, I'm so sorry. The bird is a partridge, uh, and it's, of course it's a pear tree. Why, is there a problem? I, I thought you'd be pleased. Hmm, well, it's a four-foot tree, uh, and the ground is solid with frost. I won't be able to plant it. Can I cook the bird? Well, I suppose you, you could cook the bird. Perhaps the plan could go into your window for now. Oh, good God. How big do you think my windows are? It's four feet high. Oh, dear. Perhaps a grow bag? Loving, reassuring words were exchanged and the problem was put aside for now. <clears throat> Tuesday, day two. A smaller parcel arrives with holes on each side. Perhaps a live partridge this time. It's actually two turtle doves. Thankfully, they are alive. Julia is quite taken with today's gift. Fortunately, there is a, an ornamental dovecot in the garden. Alex is thanked this time. Well planned or fortuitous accident, who knows? Wednesday, day three. An air freight box arrives from France. More holes. Inside, Julia finds three presumably French hands. How nice, a useful and appreciative gift. More brownie points for Alex. At least she can have fresh eggs. Alex phones to make sure she is happy. She is. Thursday, day four. A minibus arrives and Julia is confronted with four busty ladies in basques and fishnet stockings. A bemused Julia phones Alex. This phone call is a little fraught, to say the least. Okay, sunshine, what's today's thing all about? Oh, today, darling, I sent you four calling birds. They're not dead, are they? Far from it, my little treasure. They're very much alive. But the delivery note says four cold girls. What on earth am I supposed to do with them? Oh dear, darling. There must have been a communication cock up. I'm so sorry, my love. Just return them and I will make it right. Yes, there must have been. Uh, anyway, I've sent them packing anyway. Friday, day five. This was a brilliant success for Alex, possibly by way of an apology. Julia is pleased to open a small felt box containing five hallmarked gold rings. Julia was delighted, of course, and phones Alex to express her undying love and devotion, as you would. Saturday, day six. A rather noisy box arrives with handled with care stickers all over it and again holes in the sides. Inside, Julia discovers six geese and about 20 broken eggs. They must have continued laying en route. No matter, another useful gift for which Julia was grateful. Good use can be made of these. Well done, Alex. Sunday, day seven. 
A large truck arrives with 20 foot diameter moulded plastic pond and seven baskets containing live swans. Two workmen arrive to put in the pool. This delivery was soon followed by two police officers with an arrest warrant relating to illegal private trading of swans, which apparently belonged to the Queen. A panic-stricken Julia phones Alex. I'm about to be arrested for taking delivery of royal swans. Did you realise it's illegal to deal in swans? My God, I had no idea. I'll sort it out immediately, darling. Let me talk to the police. At this point, the workmen decided to leave. After consultation and negotiation, Julie was given a caution. The matter was concluded. But all that remained was what to do with the 20-foot pond. Monday, day 8. A large farm truck arrived with eight cows and milkmaids. The cows were unloaded and, being a little nervous, covered the road and drive with brown sludge. Approaching the afternoon milking time, the maids milked the cows and cleared off, leaving the cows to trample all over the garden. Julia was not happy and, panic-stricken, let Alex know in no uncertain terms the farmer collected cows later the same day. Tuesday, day nine. Nine members of the local theatrical society arrived to do a two-hour performance of dance. Dury was knackered and frequently clapping and trying to show interest and appreciation. Alex was thanked, but insincerely. Wednesday, day 10. Julia calls Alex. What on earth are ten men in ermine robes doing jumping back and forth over the garden wall? Thursday, day 11. Julia and their neighbours were awoken at 6am by pipers from the Scots, Scots Guards Regiment playing military tunes of glory. Not the best start of the day. Neither Julia nor her neighbours were amused. The day became more stressful when she was informed that the 12 drummers were also there and would require overnight accommodation and full breakfasts, as the drummers would play at the more reasonable time on day 12. On Christmas Eve, Alex returned and all was forgiven. The doves had settled in nicely, the fence ends were producing daily eggs, the pool kit would be installed come spring and the golden rings were proudly displayed on the dressing table. Christmas dinner would be partridge. The whole exercise cost £10,895 and provided a unique festive experience.